Today in the Smuggler's Room, it's all about getting our electronics organized. We need some efficiency. We need a fracking soldering station. Hey! Too, too aggressive? Oh, uh, no, wait, maybe not. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is all about getting efficient with the electronics, specifically all the tools we use when we build electronics. We are about to get crazy deep into the electronics portion of our room build bench. And I found that a lot of times I avoid working with the electronics just because all the different components I need to solder and build tend to be hard to put together and they're a mess when they're out. A couple years ago, Punish Props put out an episode where they built a soldering station. And I really thought the overall design was super clever and would be really easy to use. But I've really lacked the motivation the last couple of years to actually sit down and do this. Another thing that I've always been aware of is the thing that Adam Savage talks about on Tested and in his book about being aware of your shop and the tools that you use, or more importantly, those that you avoid. Because maybe it takes a lot to get them out of the drawers. Maybe they're stored in a weird place or getting them all out creates a mess and you kind of avoid it. And that's how I am with soldering, believe it or not. So today we're gonna take some inspiration from Punish Prop Soldering Station, the advice that Adam Savage shares, and we're gonna build a soldering station that is absolutely geeked out and ridiculous. Let's do it. Now it's impossible to build a soldering station that has everything you're gonna need. Electronic projects have all types of tools and materials, but there are several items that are typical for almost every one, and that's what I'm planning on organizing here. Soldering iron, tip cleaner, solder, wire, helping hands, electrical tape, and fans are all things I thought would be 100% necessary. On top of that, I'm gonna have to think through how all of this is gonna be laid out. been doing a few different layouts with this soldering station. The idea is not for this to be portable like that you would take in your vehicle and go somewhere, but semi-portable for what I do here. So I can move it around at different places in the shop. I could actually carry it downstairs into the basement if I'm working in there or wherever I might be working. I've got an area for all the little alligator clips where the fans can be installed and power for that. I have a breadboard that can be attached here that we can do mock-ups with and then room for the soldering iron. And as we go up, I'll have places for the wire and solder and whatnot. I even have a way to incorporate this rubber mat here onto a board that's then movable around. It can be used to set up some of the electronics. The biggest issue is not making this so big that it's cumbersome, making sure that the area is laid out for the best workflow I can come up with. This right here is a cabinet scraper or a card scraper, and it happens to be one of the best little tools. It has a ton of uses, cleaning up glue squeeze out, removal of small bits of material so that it's level, and so on. It's just one of those great things you should have in your arsenal. So when I'm doing a build like this one, sometimes I can get in my own head. And as I'm making it up as I go, things get overlooked or aren't quite right. So what happened here is 
I was building this bracket that eventually will hold all the fans. And while doing that, realized that I was hiding the power strip behind all the fans. I thought it was a good idea that I would hide the power strip, but the reality is it'd be nice to have power out front and accessible while working on electronics because you need power. So I went ahead, pulled this off, slid it back. Now we've got some blemishes. We'll deal with all that and cover that up nice and neat. But now the, the fans will be back almost at the back of the wall where we want it and we'll have access to power. All right. One of the key elements to this build is the helping hands, which is what you see here. These are incredibly valuable and I wanted them front and center. Of course, we're gonna have to find a way to dress this up a bit and why not a droid socket interface in the center? The fans seemed like a critical aspect to me. I spent way too many years breathing in dust, and in this case, fumes. And as much as I'm a fan of Darth Vader, I really don't want to end up requiring a full mask to sustain life for me. So adding something like the fans to help keep my lungs clean seemed like a no-brainer. Remember, shop safety really is important for your health and keeping you building for years to come. So I tried to film the electronics section of this, wiring up the fans and the LEDs, and it was a bit of a mess. So I think I'll skip the mess and have a clearer way to show you this with a diagram. 
First, we need to identify all the components. We have power, fans, LEDs, and finally our switch. My switch is called a push button rocker toggle switch. What? At least that's how it's listed on Amazon, and I hate the name. Push button rockers and toggles all have different functions, but we'll get to that in the electronic series. This switch has three terminals, power, ground, and ACC. So let's start by wiring up the ground together. From the power supply, the negative on the LED, and the switch, and the fan. Next, we'll wire up the power supply to the ACC terminal on the switch. And finally, from the power terminal on the switch to the fans and the LEDs. Now keep in mind, the LEDs I'm using in this project are rated up to 12 volts, which is what the power supply is also rated as. You'll want to meter the power supply just to be sure. I don't typically trust the labels and you want to make sure before you connect power. That's it, all wired up and ready to go. Let's get back into the build. Let's get some assembly and details going on this guy. Now there are a lot of ways you could go about building a wire spool holder. We took advantage of our laser cutter and made a couple of brackets that would hold an aluminum rod that we could use in its place as well as easily removable so that we could pull on and off the wire spools. across a pretty cool little technique. I was able to take a towel and rub it across the aluminum paint to create a brushed aluminum surface across this acrylic. Now this would take some refinement and more practice, but I think this has the potential of really turning into a neat technique you can add to creating brushed aluminum.
finally, I wanted to point out that yes, we use the laser cutter pretty heavily to create a lot of the details on this. But do you need a laser cutter to do this project? No. What we're hoping is that you see the potential of putting all of your soldering tools, or at least the bulk of them, in one place that it's easy to get out, work on stuff, and put it away. As a matter of fact, you don't even need all the geeky things that we did to this, though I highly recommend that part. All right, so now it's time for all of you to get out some of that scrap material, pull all of your soldering tools together, and build your own soldering station because we wanna see it. We wanna see how much you like building something out of nothing.